My brother emigrated from museum. Then he wrote to me when I was 14 and wanted me to come on a ship. I said, no, no, the old rock will do me. The old rock will do me. Shetlanders have traditionally been faced with a stark choice, to stay in the islands or to emigrate. They left in their droves during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. The Commonwealth countries of Australia, Canada and New Zealand were the most common destinations for Shetland emigrants. Their stories have been told and retold. Tales of gold mining fortunes, merchant navy success, political aspirations and occasional tragedies are part of the fabric of Shetland communities even today. The story that remains to be told is that of those who stayed, those left behind, those content with Shetland life, those too poor or those too attached to think about leaving the islands. For these Shetlanders, letters from abroad were the only way of finding out the fates of their loved ones. Some succeeded in their new lives, while others did not. We like the country and the climate. We do not in the least regret leaving Shetland. I do not know how we could have got along much longer. The worst is that I wasted my strength and my youth for nothing. I will always remember the parting at Garth. We feel lonely when we think about all our friends left behind. I feel much about the tenantry of Garth that is thrown out of the houses. Will not all the people make an effort to get out of the place? Surely I do feel thankful that we are out of it. I think we have more here as ever we had at home. After my arrival in Vancouver, I tried hard for work. It was shameful the way people are introduced out here to starve, for that is what it really means. I have been living in a wooden shanty. My last dollar has gone towards the payment of the rest of the shack, and my last cent goes towards posting this letter. I am downhearted tonight. I have little more to say. You need not mention to outsiders that you have received a letter from me. With tales of success and tales of tragedy, the decision to emigrate was always a difficult one.
Why do people decide to stay? Bij jou is het een groot nooit in de woorden Canada. Especially when I was at the school. We were here to spare him and I got out the map of Canada and studied him. And I reckon about the time that I left the school, I could tell the any name up the map of Canada, where he was. I, I never did, no. My mother died when I was 10, and my father was good enough to keep us all together. And I felt it was my place to be me and the oldest, to kind of stuck by him and carry on, keep the thing going for him. I, and I don't I don't regret it today. Some of the boys of yours got out well and they eventually emigrated to New Zealand and Australia and here and there. I like a Shetland to win. Best place I've ever been. Times was tough at that time. We toyed with the idea of emigrating to New Zealand, but thanks to the Crafts Commission we could maybe create our own development here. But no, I, I think everybody felt the Leven very much. Why were they here again? And what was the reason for it? Could they know sort of by them try and work it out? I thought we'd emigrating at that time too. But there wasn't a lot of work in Shetland at that time, mind. And I thought that, that I would must have mattered that much. But when I spoke to the police of me about it, because I was blind on their side, they wouldn't attack me. I had an opportunity to go back to New Zealand. A very good job of my life to I was a teacher, she would have gone too. Pat Shaw, you see, that's what he, he discovered here. I remember his advice to me was, she said, oh no, no, that's very foolish and you'll be letting your place down. Because he said, you know, there's a hidden treasure here. You know what, then, yes, very, very little. A little of this was machine work, but the body fell into that market just about, just about that time. And there were nothing but these works. And, and we did them with immigrate, and it was been in the very first of the fifties. We were fifty-one, but we had two, three weddings there. And we got the forms, and I think we were rotten and fucked up. But the uh, husband's uncle was emigrated to Australia. It must have been in the twenties, and that was a splendid place. And we were not and only the rare and upon the week, upon the day, sorry. And that was a lot more than any wages here about at that time. One of them come home. He was been away. Long time then. But they would come home and we tell them about Australia. But they didn't advise it, for they said it was, uh, there would have been ships that was come out and there would have been outbreaks and measles and young bairns was not made with children. There were spooky bairns and we had two. The oldest thing was just about two. to be honest, I don't think there's anywhere else I'd rather stay. Probably one of the most beautiful places in the world, in my opinion, on a nice summer's day. And um, things don't change just all too often, so you can be sure that, you, that uh, things will always be the same when you get back. Um, a few people I know have emigrated to the other side of the world, and they thoroughly enjoy it and I don't think they'd move back anytime soon. And obviously staying home is not for everybody. Some people are just born to travel and born to live somewhere else I suppose and 
I obviously do want to see the rest of the world, that's something I've wanted to do my whole life, is to do a bit of travelling and I still love to do that, but I don't, I still don't think I'd ever live anywhere else. The majority of Shatlanders who left did not return. However, often their objects and letters did. The SS Canberra was a ship on which some Shetlanders made the long voyage to Australia. Its lifeboat now forms a roof near the old Han Burrabo. This object houses the memories of many who made the trip. It represents something that did return to the Isles when so many of its passengers did not. The old boat came home and decided to all the rock will do for me.